and Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads. I have plans this week. It is raining, storming, thunder and lightning. It's awful weather right now and it's supposed to be like that for the rest of the week. So I thought that maybe I should just stay inside and have a 24 hour readathon. That sounds like fun. So what I'm going to do is actually set a timer on my watch for 24 hours and every time I'm reading have the timer going when I stop to go and in all honesty sing to the cat next door or pester my partner <laughs> and I will pause it and I'm just gonna see how many books I can read in actually 24 hours as opposed to just over a day. I've seen a few people do this and it seems really fun and I'm just I'm really I'm really intrigued. I really want to know how many books I can read in 24 hours and also how long it'll take me to have 24 hours of reading time because I'm working. So I will be reading, you know, lunchtime, after work, bedtime, that kind of thing. So I'm, int oh, I'm intrigued. So we will find out together. I have two books that I'm starting with. I am starting with a book that I'm buddy reading, which is Wolf Song by TJ Clune. I'm already, that's, is that even visible? I'm already this far in. I'm just over 100 pages in. The book starts off with a young boy. He's 16 and he's just, he's lonely. And then a family move in next door called the Bennets. And they are a, oh, they're a lively bunch. Lively, lively. Um, And he basically finds himself taken in as like a member of the family. And he forms this really close bond with the youngest member of the family who is 12. And I'm just not really enjoying the um, story or writing or characters, the whole, the whole thing. But I'm only 100 pages in, so I'm hoping it's gonna get better and that I'm gonna really enjoy it because the people I'm reading it with, they're liking it. So I think the problem might be me. I'm not the hugest fan of uh, werewolf books that focus on the sort of alpha element. I find that just nauseating and eye rolly but I hope that this book will get better. I hope so but because I'm not overly loving that and it's buddy read so I'm only reading three chapters a day I am gonna also read <laughs> Idol by Louise O'Neill. This I think I'm gonna love this book. I saw it on Kira Fraser's uh booktube channel she read it I think during her birthday vlog and described it in a way that I don't think the book was for her but I think the book's gonna be for me. This book is about Sam who is an influencer. She's a darling. Everybody loves her and she writes an essay about her sexual awakening with her childhood best friend Lisa and Lisa reads this essay and gets in touch to say I don't remember it being quite like that. Lisa remembers things very differently and a lot darker. So this becomes a sort of she said, she said sort of thing. And I'm so intrigued. I think this is gonna be fantastic. I'm expecting unreliable narration and I'm, I'm really excited about this book. So yay, let's see how far we get. So I am gonna do little check-ins here and there as we get through the 24 hours and see how long that takes. <laughs> I'll report back when I have an update. I've now been reading for six hours of my 24 hour readathon so I'm a quarter of the way through and I have progress, I've made progress. I have finished one book, I finished Idol by Louise O'Neill and I've made some really good progress in Wolf Song. And I I love I love this book. I can I can see why some people haven't liked it, but for me, I absolutely loved it. So it is about an influencer who has been accused of assaulting her childhood best friend. And in addition to this accusation, lots of other accusations come out of the woodworks and she makes the decision to go back to her hometown to speak to this best friend, uh, ex-best friend, and things just escalate from there. I really, I really like this book. The main character, Sam, was completely, she was not likeable at all she was 
exploitative she was controlling she was a, a liar a lot of the time and she manipulated her history in order to to sell her products and I really felt like the way that she handled the situation by going back to her hometown felt it felt authentic for the character that had been portrayed I really liked her childhood best friend Lisa I really liked her and I really liked the way that these two characters were so different and the way that they had developed as as adults since last they spoke I love the way that this book had dual timeline so you don't actually find out what really happened until so close to the end and I really liked not knowing the the truth I liked just trying to piece together things and this had my favorite trope possibly ever which is an unreliable narrator because I was trying to work out what happened and I couldn't possibly because the characters themselves kept accusing each other of of like lying and remembering history differently and I really liked it it was even just little tiny things like a schoolyard accusation and somebody remembering something differently and I thought that that was just so cleverly done I really liked the way that Lisa who had stayed in her hometown had formed this life where her friends were like her high school friends that she wasn't overly close to at the time because Sam was quite a possessive best friend as a teenager but I also kind of enjoyed the way that everybody just sort of regressed back into their teenage selves once Sam returned back home. Slowly 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 the book starts to reveal some of Sam's lies and tweaks of history. She sort of reimagined some things, some events and it very much made me ask a lot of questions, a lot a lot of questions and all the while there is a commenter on her social media who keeps sort of baiting her and it's like somebody somebody knows the truth somebody knows all of these things and I really enjoy trying to work out throughout the book first of all you know what happened with the with the accusation what was going to happen to Sam because you know a very powerful figure with a lot of money I was just thinking oh well she's gonna get away with it if, you know if she did it she's probably gonna get away with it because that's what you know the media tells us tends to happen and I liked trying to work out who was this mystery commenter and I had my suspicions I had so many suspicions but because of the unreliable narration I felt like I just I didn't guess I did not see who it was I had a lot of lot of suspects but it was not who I thought it was going to be and I really liked that I loved not guessing what was going to happen I liked having it be a surprise for me I ended up giving this book four four stars a solid four really enjoyed it I thought the writing was really really good and the book just it felt quite nostalgic as well because they were turning 40 in this book so a lot of their flashbacks went back to 1999 slash 2000 and I enjoyed that that was a golden time for me so I liked having those those flashbacks they gave me a little bit of something extra it was not a chirpy book so my next book that I pick up I'm gonna be going for something light something light um because I need it <laughs> many updates since last we spoke I also look I don't I look worse for wear today we went out for a walk because um it had been about a week since we'd left the house so kind of felt like we should go and be in nature and the weather forecast very clearly said that between 11 and 1 was going to be dry and so that's when we went for our walk and at exactly 12 o'clock it started raining just giant massive globs of rain so we got absolutely soaked um and my hair has dried like this so we're going with it um 
but it was really nice to go out and go for a woodland walk which is one of my favorite things to do when it's not pouring with rain and I am without a jacket <laughs> like I was today. Bookwise I have some updates. I have finished two more books and made progress in another one. I finished Wolf Song by TJ Klune and I, I, there were points where I grew to enjoy it a bit more but then something would happen and I would go right back to not overly enjoying it. So I think it's best just to say I didn't enjoy it uh, but I did enjoy the group that I had where we were chatting. That was fun. I just didn't really enjoy the book and it kind of put a bit of a dampener on my 24 hour readathon because you don't want to have a one star read when you're doing a readathon. That that doesn't feel fun. It doesn't feel in the spirit of things. So I moved on to my next book. I wanted something fun. I wanted something light, maybe a little bit silly. So I picked up The Great Big Demon Hunting Agency oh, by Peter Oxley. I thought this was a middle grade book and that's why I thought it was going to be, you know, fun, light hearted. But I, I think it is an adult piece of fiction. It is about these two crooks, these two criminals who are trying to go straight. They're trying to live on the right side of the law, but because of their past as criminals, they're finding it really hard to get honest work. So they go into business themselves hunting demons because there are demons in this world. It's set in 19th century London and I really liked the setting. I think I had convinced myself that there was going to be a Jack the Ripper-esque element to this story because women were going missing and it was being tied back to these demons. I liked the main characters Spencer and Bart. They were just a little bit, you had one who was so whip smart and you had one who was sort of the muscles but he wasn't the he wasn't the brightest bulb and it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Pinky and the Brain from Animaniacs which kind of made me feel quite endeared towards them. They ended up working for a very wealthy woman who had some concerns about her husband. She wanted him followed because she kind of felt like he was maybe up to no good and he was. He was up to no good. And I really liked their sort of relationship as a trio. It was very unexpected, but it was very enjoyable. I do hope that she's maybe going to be in future books as this is part of a series. It's the first of a series. So, so I would really like to have more of them as a, as a sort of gang, finding demons. This not only had some demon hunting elements, but it also had some paranormal elements, which I really did enjoy. I just would have wanted more, just more and greedy. It was such a short book but I had a good time with it. It was a very very sort of Moorish easy to read book and it had enjoyable characters and a very intriguing plot. I just wanted a little bit more. I want to know more. More about the demons. More about the paranormal activity. More about the world that they're in because it's our world but it's got demons. So I want more, but I think that maybe this was like a, an appetizer to open the series. So I'm hopeful that maybe more questions will be answered in future books. I'm going to keep an eye out for, for more of them because I'm looking forward to it. And I started another new book. I was inspired to choose this book because when I was reading Wolf Song, there were a few, I'm going to say quite catty, <laughs> remarks towards Twilight and that made me sort of want to read some things with vampires <laughs> because I love a vampire book so I decided to look at my TBR and pick the vampire book that was on there and I went with Queen of Kings by Maria Devana Headley. I am about 100 or so pages in. The book is stained but I received it stained. I didn't stain it. No, it's my friend. I treat this very well. <laughs> this book is about Cleopatra who has made a deal. She made a deal with a god in order to save her husband, her love. And she ends up summoning the goddess of death, of destruction and makes a deal. And that deal doesn't turn out too well for Cleopatra. She finds herself starting to crave 
blood and I'm thinking vampire. So, so far I have read about Cleopatra making her deal during this time Egypt is being invaded by Octavian Caesar and at this point in the book everybody thinks that Cleopatra is dead but seeing as I am this far into the book there's still 300 pages to go we know she's not or maybe she is I don't know but I'm excited to find out this book is really exciting because I am a sucker for a little bit of historical fantasy and I am really really excited I'm really enjoying reading this and I like books that have sort of deals with gods that maybe don't quite go according to plan so I'm really enjoying this so far and I'm excited to find out what happens next. Six more hours are done. I have finished one more book. I have finished Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, which I loved. This book isn't out yet. It's out in August, August, I think. So I'm not going to give any spoilers, just sort of vague plot, which is all available on, on the blurb on Goodreads. Um, I, I loved this book. I loved it. Viv is injured. She has hurt herself. Well, she's not hurt herself. She's been hurt by somebody else in battle. She was on a quest trying to defeat a great necromancer and ends up with an injured leg and she can't, she can't stand, she can't fight. So she has to go off to this adorable quaint seaside village to rest up and get herself all healed so that she can come back to battle when she's healthy again. We get to meet a whole gaggle of characters who are, oh, I love them. My favourite character though, I have to say, is um called Pot Roast. They are a cross between like an owl and a pug and they're adorable and I, I love him and I would like to feed him baked goods. If you've read Legends and Lattes, I highly recommend reading this book when it comes out because it's got everything that I loved about Legends and Lattes. It's got beautiful friendship, it's got really interesting characters, it's got a gorgeous setting, like a cosy, cosy vibe. There is a baker and you know that the baked goods described in this book are just, like I felt I was gonna salivate, they sounded so good. And I really hope that at some point a recipe book will come out because while I am not a good baker, I will learn, I will try because I want to eat everything mentioned in this book. There is a bookshop as well and I love books about books and even though none of the books in this book are, are real, the, the feeling behind it is. So like Viv learns about books, she learns to sort of what she likes about reading and she learns to find some enjoyment in it and I thought that was so good. There were exciting moments and this is a cosy fantasy. The tagline for Legends and Lattes was uh, I think it was high fantasy something something low stakes and and that is the same with this book. There are relatively low stakes but that's not to say that it's boring. It is exciting and I found myself just sort of waiting waiting because there were nice things happening and I don't trust, I don't trust a book to just give me nice things. So I was, I was eagerly waiting some big events and I wasn't disappointed. I maybe love this book more than I loved Legends and Lattes, but I think that's because there was a bookshop. <laughs> um, maybe. I am hoping that this means there's going to be a whole series of, of this story because I love Viv. I loved getting to learn more about Viv, to get to learn to get to meet like baby Viv when she was younger and just the same. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I love the characters and this is a contender for my favourite book of July. I'm, yeah, I had a really good time with it. I have made excellent progress as well in Queen of Kings, but I've not finished it yet. So I suppose I'll wait to give an update when, when I have finished it because I feel silly to do a sort of partial review, but I can say for certain that I am really, really enjoying it.
I have now finished my full 24 hour readathon. Um, my eyes are really sore today. It is nothing to do with reading for 24 hours, but they're sore. So I have to wear my glasses so there is glare and I'm trying to like avoid it. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna just try the best we can. <laughs> I finished two more books, which is more than I could have hoped for. I finished Queen of Kings by Maria Devana Headley, which I'd already started. This book was about Cleopatra, Egyptian queen. She made a deal with the goddess of death in order to save her love, Mark Antony. And as expected with deals with the gods, it didn't work out quite so well for Cleopatra. And she found herself cursed basically. I I misunderstood this book because I just focused on the fact that the blurb said that Cleopatra woke up craving blood and I thought vampires? Is there vampires? And it wasn't vampires. It didn't even say on the back that it would be vampires. It said very clearly that Cleopatra found herself shape-shifting. Not into a vampire but I just one track mind it seems and I I really did I love it or did I just really like it I really enjoyed this book I ended up giving it four stars I have read a lot of books with Greek mythology with Roman mythology but not a lot that include Egyptian gods and I I really liked it because it was something that to me was quite fresh. I found myself rooting for Cleopatra who was not, she was not an innocent person in all of this, not at all, but I found myself really rooting for her and just realised I am sat somewhat like a goblin on my sofa because I have books and I'm trying to hold them up with part of my body so I'm going to try and sit a little straighter. Um, I really really was rooting for Cleopatra. I found her to just, I found myself sympathising with her because the deal did not work out the way that she had hoped. This was a fantastic story about love and obligation and revenge and I love me a revenge story and in addition to Cleopatra dealing with her, her curse, there were some extra sort of magical elements in this book. There was a witch that I kind of, kind of was rooting for her too. <laughs> I maybe it was written for the wrong people. I find this to be such an interesting book and such like a page turner. I really was so excited to read it, to pick it up every time and it's quite chunky. It's just under 500 pages and I really liked it. So thank you to my friend Wendy who swapped this with me because I ended up having a really good time with it. When I finished that book I found that I had just over three hours left and I thought I want to get something that I know I'm going to be able to finish. So what I did, because I'm a maths girly, is I added up all of the pages that I had read so far and divided it by the time that I had read to work out my my average hourly page. And I then times that by three. And I got, I think I ended up with like somewhere about 280 pages. And then I had a look and saw what books do I have that I want to read that are around that page count. So I went with my Read Christie pick, which was Evil Under the Sun. I finished this and I was left with just over two minutes left on the timer. I, oh, I timed that so well and I was, oh, I felt smug. I felt so proud of myself. <laughs> this book is a Poirot got my little Poirot cushion behind me. This takes place on a gorgeous remote resort in, I want to say somewhere like Cornwall, somewhere you know, beautiful that people go on holiday. And a beautiful woman, an actress, ends up dead. She's been killed. And because Poirot is there, he starts to help looking into the case. And there are a lot of suspects because Arlena, our beautiful tragic figure, had a past. She had a past. She was very popular with the gents, 
some of whom were at this resort and fingers were getting pointed in all sorts of directions and there were a lot of people that looked very guilty. There were a lot of motives and there were a lot of alibis that didn't feel to be completely honest. I really like this. I really like the setting of this. I love, I think my favourite Poirots are the ones where he's on holiday. <laughs> the poor man just cannot get a break. He always gets brought into things. I really liked the the cast. There were so many characters. I really liked having Poirot be able to just show off and solve the day. I had read this before but not for a really really long time and I found myself just, I mean I was suspicious of everybody. <laughs> I was so suspicious. Everybody looked guilty and I think that's my favourite thing when I read Nagatha Christie is that I love when I don't remember who it was and it could have been anybody that just makes it so fun for me trying to work it out and I did remember as we got to the end who did it but I can't, I can't claim a victory from that it was too late in the day it was a really fun reread and I had a good time with it and I think it was the perfect end to my 24 hour readathon with a book that I know that I was gonna enjoy and I did. I also treated myself to some books. I have an unexpected book haul, mini book haul, to share with you. Um, I had a day. It's been a really tough week. My work is really, really busy, super extra busy, and we are short-staffed. We've got a lot of people who are not well, so there's a lot of work and not a lot of time to do it. So I have been stressed out my box and I, was in the office having an awful day it was raining I didn't have my raincoat and I have a raincoat I have three raincoats was I wearing any of them that day no so I got soaked and I decided I am going to go to the bookshop and buy myself some treats so the, the day was was saved and that is that is exactly what I did what I did I treated myself to Chain Gang All Stars by Nana Kwame Ajay Brennan. And I saw Willow from Books and Bow talking about the, this book. So I was influenced and I bought it too. And it's signed. It's a signed one, which we don't get a lot of signed copies in up here in Aberdeen. So I was very excited. I also was inspired by Amelia Barlow, who had been talking about. Kala by Colin Walsh and I, I keep seeing this book everywhere and, and now I will keep seeing it in my own house because I bought it. I also have one more book that in my defence, <laughs> I need no defence, but in my defence I pre-ordered this in December and it's July, I forgot, I forgot it was coming. Uh, Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I love Silvia Moreno Garcia. I have read almost not almost all of her books there's a fair few in the back catalogue I've not read yet because they're so expensive to get in the UK but I'm I'm doing it I'm getting there I'm making my way through them all so this was my unexpected haul I regret absolutely nothing it's it's been stressful and books make things they don't make things less stressful but you know they're nice and these were all of the books that I read in my 24 hours plus two ebooks I read a lot more than I thought I would and I I know I read quickly. Um, I read quite quite quickly. <laughs> I was once told that I read like I'm being chased, and that feels accurate <laughs> because I feel like I read quite quickly, as if somebody is rushing me to get the book off of me, and I'm like, no, I have to finish. So just in case anybody feels any sort of way because we have different reading speeds, that's okay. It doesn't really matter how quickly you read, just as long as you read things that you like. I'm off to go and get ready because I'm going out with my friend. It is Friday and we are in our 30s, so we are going out for ice cream. <laughs> and then we're gonna go and see uh, Lady Bunny. I'm so excited. I haven't been out for a long time because I don't like going out. I like being inside, but my friend asked if I wanted to go with her and I was like, that sounds fun. So I'm going to go and 
put on a raincoat because it's still <laughs> it's still raining. Let me know what you've been up to this week and if you've read anything good. Thank you so much for watching.